and I'm going to start off with the Darvin Ham firing because I th- felt like this deserved its own segment. You know, there's many sports shows have 10 minutes, eight minutes dedicated all to Darvin Ham firing. What I want to, what I'm actually disgruntled about is the media's reaction to the Darvin Ham firing because everybody suddenly has adopted this mindset of guys. We can't just use Darvin Ham as an es- a scapegoat, guys. It wasn't Darvin Ham's fault, guys. It was LeBron's fault. It LeBron and AD, do, don't they deserve some blame, guys? Rob Palinka put the roster together. He didn't make a trade at the deadline. The, I don't know if anybody has watched the Lakers this season or wa- started watching from Game One of the season. Last year, the Lakers made the Western Conference Finals with the lineup of D'Angelo Russell at the point guard, Austin Reeves at the shooting guard. Rui Hachimura at the three or LeBron at the three, whatever you want to say. The other person played power forward. And then number four, at the five position, they played Anthony Davis. That is a lineup that they played the closest sweep in NBA history against the Nuggets, who won the championship, was, and the one they made the Western Conference Finals with. To start the year with all of those guys still on the Lakers roster, Darvin Ham played Torian Prince 32 minutes a game. They got away yeah. with it in the in-season tournament. Then after the in-season tournament with Rui on the bench and playing Torian Prince and Cam Reddish, who's a 10th or 11th guy in the league, they went 3-13. and So we will get into the Lakers a little bit later. But the reason the Lakers had to play the Nuggets in the first round is Darvin Ham's fault completely. <laughs> so to, is, are, is a reason the Nuggets... The reason the Lakers lost to the Nuggets in the playoffs, Darvin Ham's fault? No, because the Lakers aren't better than the Nuggets. But they shouldn't have even had to, like the Lakers should have been a six seed playing the Timberwolves in the first round, or they should could have been. Uh, but ma- maybe this year. But they had. I think they played them last year and won. So um, if I recall correctly, but even if they didn't, um, like it, it's a different matchup. But the reason they had to play the team that beat them last year was because Darvin Ham did a bad job coaching. He played Cam Reddish way too many minutes. He played Torian Prince way too many. And the idea that he's being used as a scapegoat for the Lakers, like no one's upset that the Lakers didn't beat the Nuggets this year. That's not the problem. The problem is that they were even in that position in the first place. They should have been a four or a five seed. They should have gotten to play the Suns or gotten to play the Pelicans or even the Thunder, but they did. They weren't in that position. And I cannot believe that the media has now taken this idea that like it's this we're scapegoating. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it is just because like. I get to a certain extent where it's like, oh, well, you know, it can't be all his fault. Like, obviously, these star- like some of these star players do hold some responsibility towards this. I understand that. But he's also just not a good coach. So, like, there's a reason why these star players weren't giving him, like, the same level of respect as, like, these other great coaches because if you're not a good coach and somebody knows you're an idiot and they're really good at what they do they're not gonna listen to you i it's driving me insane because like darvin ham just d- during the regular season didn't make the right adjustments and now people mm-hmm. like you're saying like it's clear that he didn't have the coaching ability in the regular season to make correct choices on how they wanted to play so i don't understand where like th- there are coaches are all the time used as scapegoats. I, there's so many of them that you can make mm-hmm. that claim for over time. Um, like for example, Frank Vogel, who got ran out, like he was much more of a scapegoat who the Lakers fired two years ago or last year. Um, yeah, he was he was doing fine with the two team. years. Yeah, two years ago he came off a championship. Two years later, gets fired. I felt like he was kind of a scapegoat for a he bad roster. He was definitely much more of a scapegoat than, yeah. Than yeah, Darvin yeah. Ham. Again, because like the Lakers barely eked into this playoffs, and that was a result of going 3-13 and 13 yeah. after the in-season tournament. And also, in the big... Oh, this is the other point. In the biggest game of the season, it was when they were playing the Warriors, and if they win that game, they get to hold the 60. They would have like a game and a half or a game up on the seventh seed, and they would have sure themselves a not playing in the play-in spot, which again, I know in hindsight, they would have ended with the Timberwolves, and maybe that ends bad. We're not playing that game. We're just saying if they avoid but, the yeah. Nuggets in the first round, if they if they beat the Warriors, they might have had a real shot to get the sixth seed. In that game, Darvin Ham played a lineup that had never played any minutes the entire series together. They got That's outscored by too. 12 points by the Golden State Warriors in two and a half minutes of game time, and the game was over. 
That's so insane. that is coaching. That is horrible coaching right there. Yeah. In the playoffs, you get lucky because you have the best player of all time who's an in-game coach probably telling you, Darvin, we're not doing that. Darvin, we're not doing that. <laughs> and that's why you don't look bad in the playoffs. But like when, you, when LeBron doesn't do that during the regular season, you look kind of good. So I'm disgruntled because I listen to guys like Colin Coward go on his show in the morning and say, oh, oh guys, I think Darvin... And this is Stephen A. Smith said this. All these guys are like, Darvin Ham being used as a scapegoat. No. He made bad decisions all season. It's not about the Nuggets series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Like, it's it, it's just, I feel like this this narrative came out of literally nowhere. Like, nowhere at any point did anybody think that he was a good coach or that he should stay. And then the second he gets fired, it's like, why is he being fired? It's like, you just said he, he wasn't a good, but whatever. It's fine. He's fired. We move on. The but Lakers are, are still going to be bad. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we still get to see them every single day in the news cycle, right? Yep. Because they're the Lakers. Yep. How does this exactly. affect LeBron's legacy, guys? Exactly. Well, JJ um, Reddick's going to be coaching the Lakers next year, so. You're right. That, that would be hype. That podcast is going to go crazy. That would be hype.